wicked, wicked fly. Welcome to this new season of the Have a Cup of Jahani podcast. So I want to title this new season that I'm embarking on with I'm Growing. So this is going to be the season of growth. And um, that's what I'm going to share with you throughout the season. So I thank you for coming over here and sitting with me. And I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. And welcome to our third episode of April, where we are talking about all those things, lessons learned of the things that now that I'm looking back, I can see were things that I was doing that were holding me back from growth. And we talked about minimizing myself on the first one. We talked about defensiveness, kind of throwing away the message because of the messenger. On the second episode, on this episode, we are going to talk about, and this should have been my first one, uh, because I, I think this, is, this was the, the genesis of this theme is when I had this conversation, which I completely forgot. And um, just now I was like, well, let me listen to my recordings because I I record myself whenever I don't have time to write. And I record my thoughts on books that I'm reading at the moment. Um, and if you look at my blog, you will see that I have reading logs in there. And um, sometimes I transcribe those into blog posts. And sometimes I just leave the recording and, and publish that with the blog posts about uh, the book that I'm reading or a book that I've read. Uh, but I also record those thoughts that just revolve around my head. I tend to overthink things quite a lot and uh, conversations uh, a lot of the time just stay <laughs> inside my head, revolving, 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 just, just, just going around that circle until I am so tired of thinking about it, <laughs> process it either through journaling or through recording my thought as you're going to hear here. And and doing something with that, right? Because once I process it, it's, it's this piece of information that I am using to have some introspection about in general learning or personal learning or kind of career learning or or leadership learning, any any one of those buckets where uh, me myself, my identity is in those buckets. So any one of those buckets could be uh, what I pour this piece of information that I have just processed. Hopefully that makes sense to y'all. But on this third episode of April, we are going to talk about fear of failure. And that's why I'm saying like this should have been the first one. But hey, should have, could have, would have too late for that. Now you're going to get to hear it as the third episode of April and we all going to learn and we all going to enjoy it. And then y'all going to put some things in the comments and we're going to continue on the conversation. Are you ready? You know you are. Let's go. All right. So as I stated, this is a bit of a two-part And I haven't finished listening to the whole recording that I did. uh, So I may need to do some editing in this episode. (laughs) Hopefully not too much. I don't don't know what I put in here. I just know that this may be a little convoluted because I know I I talk about uh, from the bit that I was able to listen to before I jumped in the shower. That was that the, the fear of failure due to embarrassment and fear of failure, period. So those two things. Are I talked about in here, but let's listen. So something I started thinking about something um, because this is a conversation that I had yesterday at work, and this conversation has stayed with me throughout the night. You see that 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 whole revolving thing. <laughs> so if you hear that background, I believe that this was like that one week that it was just raining. Uh, nonstop. And that is that people hold their own selves back because of embarrassment of what others may say about them when they fail. And 
and um and I see this as like perceived obstacles that are not necessarily real obstacles that sometimes we hold on to as reasoning for not doing something that we need to do in order to achieve our goals, right? Or, or do something great with our lives or serve within our purpose in life. All right. So there it is. That's, that's one of the nuggets that I throw in there. I'm rambling quite a bit there towards the end. But the embarrassment of it all, right? So let me explain a little bit why I feel that this conversation stayed so much with me to the point where I'm talking about it now. And I recorded this back in March. And that is because I came from a household of women that were so burdened with what other people would say about them and about the family that they held back quite a lot, not just on exercising their potential, but unfortunately on being themselves. So growing up, my grandma raised me since I was born to nine or 10 years old. And then my mom took it from there. Once I came to the United States, uh, there was like a lapse in there when I bounced from household to household until I got to my mom, like at the age of 11. And then, but then I left at the age of 16, right? I went on to do my own thing. So I didn't get to spend that much time with my mom as it is. Um, but something that I noticed on, on both of these matriarchs was how burdened they were by que lo que va a decir la gente, what will people say? And this was something that was repeated throughout my childhood over and over and over in various ways, in various languages, using whatever slangs w was there at the moment. Uh, but it all boiled down to the embarrassment of judgment. and. Growing up, you know, when you when you're a kid, right, you think like you're going to be so different than your parents. <laughs> like and that was me. I was no I was no different. I grew up and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be like my mom uh, that like I said that over and over and over. I was like, oh, my God, this lady is embarrassed of her own shadow. I was like, what is going on? This is horrible. I was like, I can't be like that. Thankfully, I, I did stuck at, you know, stuck it out with that uh, promise to myself. But I, I think I had, I had a heads up. I had a bit of a blessing uh, with the way that I was born. Um, and and y'all know, right? Because it's something that I talk about almost in every single episode that I'm here talking, and and that is that I was born different. So how can I say this? So it's like coming out of the house, right? It's embarrassing per se. I, I look different. I will always look different. I've looked different since I was born and I will look different all the way till I die. So when I came to that realization at a very young age, when I say nine or 10, when I got out of my, my grandma's house, it was like this epiphany of sorts of either trigger warning here, right? Um, so be careful or lower down your tone if you're around children. But I was like, either I unalive myself or I stay inside the house and never come out. You know, that was kind of like this, this epiphany that I had. I remember one day, it's just like, I just had enough. And, and I was like, well, I'm not going to unalive myself. You know, that was like, I pushed that away. And I was like, and I'm too... I come from a poor family, you know, I'm poor. I can't, I don't have the luxury of being a, a hermit, you know, that I can't like in that movie where Sandra Bullock gets everything delivered to her home. God, I wish I had that kind of money that I can do that, but I didn't. And I'm not going to use my money for that now. So no, but for me, I didn't have the luxury of feeling embarrassed because then that would have left me 
um, at a big disadvantage. Either I'm not here in this world or I just don't come out of the house and I never get to experience the world. So because of that, I just took that out of my plate. I didn't give myself that option to feel embarrassment based off of other people's opinions of me and how I look. So that's why I call it a blessing, the way that I that I was born, um, looking different, right, with a lazy eye, crooked on the line. And I can see how that benefited me. Now, back then, right, I hated it. You know, I hated the world. I hated everybody in it. It was it was a horrible thing. And and I always felt so disadvantaged and always asked why, why? I will have these like long conversations with God and I'll be so mad at him or her. And and I would just have these shouting matches in my in my shower in my bathroom about it. But then this epiphany came to me and I was like, you know what? It is what it is, John. <laughs> so you either don't live it or you grab life by the balls per se, and you go on and live it, you know, and make everybody else kick rocks. I chose the latter. So when I am around my family members that still live in this kind of like, what will people think about me? It angers me quite a lot because I look at them. I look at the physical advantage that they have of being able to move around in the world and not be deemed different, uh, to to be able to be just like everyone else, just by being themselves, right, who they are. And, and I see them being embarrassed or being afraid of judgment as a, a burden, an obstacle that they put on themselves. And I don't see a good reason for that. And that's what angers me because I see how much more like these matriarchs growing up could have been if only they would have let go of that. But as I say that now, and as I might mature, mature, mature in life, I think that's how you say mature, mature. I'm not saying that right. You know, as I grow more mature. Um, I can I can see that particularly my grandma she did what she could with the knowledge the education and and how society was when when she when she was alive when she was growing up I, I don't think for her I don't think there was much more she could have done I think for the better part of my grandma's life the the lady la doña she was she was surviving and um and she was trying to ensure that her children survive as well in this world and and she she went about it and did it the best way that she could however that was and and I really can't judge that and I, I can't really judge my my mom either as well because we all have our lives and our choices that we make and it is what it is and and we're the only ones that can answer uh, our creator later on as to why we made those choices or as to why we didn't make certain choices. But it it irks me when I see other people holding themselves back while still understanding that at the end of the day, uh, they're the only ones with the power to change themselves. But let's continue and listen to what I have to say. It's sad because I see that more and more and more. The more that I I talk with people, the more that I work with people, I I see untapped potential because of that, because of of just that fear of, of failure. And I think if we stop looking at failure as this big no no, big embarrassing moment that you will never get over it. And then just see it as I tried something, it didn't work. Now I know better. Let me do something. Let me tweak it. Let me do something better. Fall forward, right? Do something else. So that way I can keep pushing and moving towards this goal that I have. So I think if we reframe our thought and we get rid of these perceived obstacles that we put on in front of ourselves, 
I, I think we can get after the things that we want to get after because then you that won't be holding you back. That won't be there to have you live in fear, have you move in fear. And I, I oh God, it's just, I get so passionate about this because it bothers me so much because it just, it precludes somebody from being their authentic self. It, it keeps them from doing the things that they want to do. And, and here's the thing, right? When Wait, before I get really deep into it, let me just, let me just address what I said here with, with the fear of failure. If you're listening to this and, and we all do, I don't even think this is something that just because I'm talking about it here that I have overcome and I'm like super perfect at it. Um, it, it's just because of the way that I was born and, and how I experienced life and how I had to survive through life. I gain certain traits and attributes and skills that not a lot of people have. And and one of those happens to be my my tolerance level <laughs> for embarrassment. So I don't I don't get it. Like it takes a lot for me to get embarrassed, right? Uh, uh, I'm very yeah to the point where like I'm very loud, obnoxious, and just like you know um, yeah a little bit on the on the on culture side, and I really don't care what people think. But um, but it's because of the way that that I grew up, that I experienced life, that that's why I'm that way. And I understand that not a lot of people are like that, particularly if you come from a household where image is very important. Um, you're going to have a lot of a lot of those obstacles. But I, I do believe that reframing failure so that way we can see it as just an experiment right? That we tried a certain way, but it didn't work. And now we're one step closer to discovering the solution. You see? So, because I think some of us look at failure as if that is it. That is the answer to us not reaching whatever goal it was on the other side of that try. Right. And, and some of us look at failure as if that's it. That's the one answer. That is the no. And 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 that means that we cannot do this. We cannot accomplish this. That's it. We're done. But if we look at failure, not as a no, but I, I hate to sound cheesy, but as a not yet. Or if we look at failure as a try, like I said before, that that's particularly how I look at it. I'm like, OK, this didn't work this way. That means that I can cross that method out and and I get to be creative again and, and then utilize another method to achieve that. So that's how I look at when something does not work in the moment. And I also, no me aferro. I'm not, I don't know how to say that in English, but I'm not like aggressively attached to to wins per se, I'm more attached to continuous small improvements. And that also helps me to not take uh, setbacks or quote unquote failures too harshly because I, I look at, I look really hard at identifying the positives in there. What did I learn? You know, that's what I take away. And, and what is the small improvement? that I gained from that try. That's usually what I try to hold on to. Now, I am my worst critic, right? So, I mean, like I said, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm very harsh to myself because I want to like do something extremely perfect. And we're going to talk about that because that has to do with procrastination. That will be on the next episode. So I don't want to get too deep into that rabbit hole. But let's continue to listen. You live in your authentic self and you do the things that you want to do, right? You can't help but attract wealth, abundance, and prosperity into your life because of the energy that you're exuding. You see what I'm saying? So 
it's not going to be overnight. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be overnight. And you may need to have a job and do things that you don't want to do. So that way you can have the practical aspect of your life taken care of. But when you embody your authentic self, fearlessly, you are going to attract good things. I mean, there's just no, no ifs or buts about this. And the only way to embody your authentic self is to let go of the fear of what others will think. And we'll be right back. Whispers in the shadows. A chill in the air that grips your soul. The past isn't dead. It's alive. It's waiting. It's... The devil that haunts me. (laughs) (laughs) From the mind of J.E. Ortega comes a tale so chilling, it blurs the lines between vengeance and redemption, reality and nightmares. Meet Isabella, a woman haunted not just by the ghost of her daughter, but by the sins of her past. As the walls of her sanity crumble, can she escape the grip of a spectral menace? Or will her demons consume her? Dive into a world where every page crackles with suspense, where every chapter peels back the layers of a curse so profound it echoes through generations. The Devil That Haunts Me isn't just a story. It's an experience, a journey through the darkest corridors of the human heart. Are you brave enough to face the devil? Are you ready to uncover the truth that haunts us all? Find out in The Devil That Haunts Me, available wherever books are sold. Pre-order your copy today and confront the devil within. El Diablo te espera. The devil awaits. Wow. Hey, past Joa is very wise, people. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm listening to this. I'm like, man, who's this lady? Okay, you know, I want her as my coach now. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, so wow, no, this is this listen, everyone. So I'm a little flabbergasted right now. So to to reach abundance, one must be our own authentic self. To be our own authentic self, one must be able to let go of the fear of what others think and the fear of failure. Wow. I backtracked all of that. This is coming from someone I'm, I'm Latina, and, and this is big in my family. What will others say? See? A big mama there you in go. In my family, it was how I was raised. Uh, my mom is heavily like this. She, she just, this is her entire mindset. And I remember thinking as a young person how I didn't want to be that <laughs> when I grew up. I would look at her. I forgot I had said so this. Bad. And, and I remember always making a point in my mind to to not be that way. And and for someone who looks different, I have said it plenty of times. And if you see me in person, that's the first thing you will notice about me. I have a lazy eye. So it's like I was born different. So for me to embody my authentic self didn't come as easily as it does for most people who doesn't have um, an external uniqueness to their physical appearance right so but i did it and, and that's why i'm like if if i can do it like 
a lot of people can as well, if, if not all, but I'm not gonna make that general blanket statement because there's more nuance to, to this, right? And to each, um, each and everyone's lives. Uh, but yeah, you know, and, and I just, and don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm not fearful, I feel fear, I just don't focus on it. I just push it aside and I have this little thing that I, I tell myself and it's like, so what, or whatever, you know, that that's like my mantra now, so what, whatever, you know, just, just do it, you know, and this, and, and those are the things that I repeat over and over to kind of like let go of that fear and, and get rid of my hesitancy uh, when it comes to being my authentic self or going after things that I want to uh, get after. And, Wow. You see, you see, oh my goodness. All right. Thank you, Pastor Joa. That is very insightful. I'm still not done. There's still a little bit. So I got to see what, what do I say to end this, this recording. But I just wanted to say a little bit more about that. It's not that I don't feel fear. I do. I just don't focus on it. It, because I'm not like in purview, right? I'm not, I haven't taken this vaccine where it's like uh, the, the virus of um, embarrassment doesn't touch me. The virus of fear doesn't touch me at all. It does. It's just, I've learned to push it away and I've learned not to focus on it, but I'm still fearful. I still get butterflies whenever I have to talk. Uh, especially to a big crowd. I still get butterflies whenever I am uh, going through a test, whether it is a scholarly test or whether it is a physical endurance test, fitness test, whatever it is, I still get the butterflies in my stomach. I still am fearful of not performing to the rate of where I see myself, right? Because once again, I'm, I'm like my own worst critic and I always want to do like the very best and things that I do. So I tend to be kind of hard on myself on that, but I don't focus on it. I breathe that out <laughs> so that way I can perform. But let's see what past Joy is saying. I encourage everyone to to do the same and see, see what comes out of it. Just try it, try it, put it, put it into play for like a week or two and, and see what happens and just tell yourself, so what, you know, let's see, let's do it, you know? All right, bye. <laughs> that was such an enthusiastic bye, huh? I know, I know, I know. All right, bye. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and caveat with um, past joy and say, try it, try it, uh, make, create your own mantra or whether you want to use the ones that I gave you here uh, to try them out or until you find your own, go ahead and do it. Tell yourself, so what? And go ahead and do it. What's the worst that it can happen or just do it or fuck it. You know, that <laughs> that's usually what I do. And you'll be surprised and what you accomplish when you just try and try without the fear of what will happen or embarrassment or judgment of others. And I think the more that you do that, the more that you execute, the more that you action certain things and you become more apt at looking inward and concentrating on yourself, on your own actions, on your own body, on being present in your body, the easier it will be to ignore others. And oh, by the way, I, I mean, there is some social media TikToks, and, and I think it may be some research out there where it says that we as human beings think that we are being watched and judged by others when in fact that doesn't happen as often as we think it does. So while you think like somebody is looking at you and judging you harshly, more often than not, there really are not. That's more your fear of embarrassment. That's more of you thinking that that is happening. You see? So 
more often than not, you thinking that somebody is looking at you and judging you, it's not happening. So why are you doing that to yourself? (laughs) Don't do that to yourself. Just go ahead, use one of the mantras, make up your own, and go ahead and take this first step forward and, and action that task. Get after that goal. Just just do that first step and say, so what? And see what happens. All right. So this was Joa with Have a Cup of Johnny podcast, a podcast that talks about lessons learned, embarrassing, sometimes sad and tragic, but um, all around a fun, good experience. And I love to share these things with you. So if you find this helpful, please Share the podcast, rate it, leave a comment, or email me. My email is joa at haveacupofjoani.com. That is joa at haveacupofjoani.com. I will see you on the next episode where we're talking about the big monster of procrastination. See you then. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. Thank you so much for listening. I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Do a rating if you can on the podcast. Share it with somebody you love. But most importantly, come back. See you next time. Bye. Are you ready to embark on a captivating journey of resilience and revelation? Get ready to immerse yourself in the extraordinary world of Isla Delgado a nine-year-old girl who has experienced more than her fair share of trauma. Isla's life takes a dramatic turn when she's forced to live with her dad and his new wife for six months. Her anxiety intensifies as she becomes convinced that her stepmom is an evil witch. But Isla is determined to protect herself and expose her stepmom's true nature. As the gripping story unfolds, Isla discovers that things aren't always as they seem. Join her on a transformative journey of self-discovery, where she learns that even the most traumatic experiences can be triumphantly overcome with the power of love and understanding. People are saying, while the alarming trend of attempting to ban books continues in the United States, this book is a fantastic reminder of the power that books have. A child will read this story and feel seen, heard, and hopefully feel some peace. For children of the appropriate age, this book provides the opportunity for a wonderful exercise in empathy. The message of the story is truly something a lot of children out there and even some adults might need to hear. Mrs. Franchi's Evil Ring and the Six Months That Change Everything is a heartwarming tale that explores the profound theme of family, trust, and the power of compassion. This inspiring story will leave listeners of all ages feeling uplifted and inspired. Don't miss out on this middle grade read and be prepared to be captivated by a story that will touch your heart and ignite your imagination. Mrs. Franchi's Evil Ring is available everywhere books are sold.